back many years. All right, War on the Saints, chapter eight. Yes. Uh, page 194, starting at just below all the refusals. The fighting through period is a very painful time. There are bad moments of acute suffering and intense struggle arising out of the consciousness of the resistance of the powers of darkness in their contest for what the believer endeavors to reclaim. The moment he begins to advance from weakness into strength, he becomes aware of the strength of the evil spirits resisting him. Consequently, he feels worse when fighting through. This is a sign of dispossess dispossession, although the believer may not think or feel it to be so. The order of dispossession is not in the order of which the possession took place. The last thing given to the spirits of evil is generally the first to be removed because light is given upon the experience of the moment and deliverance from the bondage of the moment is the most urgent need. Sometimes it is the advanced stage of possession with its terrible bondage, which reveals his condition to the man himself. And is not until he starts point by point to fight back to his normal condition that he discovers the depth of the pit he has fallen into and the slow work of the regaining the liberation of his whole being from the power of the deceiving enemy. The immediate effects of dispossession. The believer fighting back to freedom must not be deceived about the immediate effects of dispossession for it may appear as he advances that he is slipping back. For instance, when the man is in a passive state under the bondage of the enemy, he may absolutely, regardless of what he is, what he feels and how he appears, he may be absolutely regardless of what he is and what he feels and how he appears. And therefore he cannot feel and cannot be touched on these points. But as he fights back to the normal condition, these things become real to him again. And he thinks he has gone back. But the fact that he feels about these matters proves a degree of dispossession. For his feelings, which had become numb, are once more regaining their normal condition. The believer must not be off guard when he knows much about dispossession, because there are because there are new realms of deception and he must take heed not to confuse ordinary wrestling in the spirit with the powers of darkness, with the manifestations of the workings of their workings through possessions. Once again, he must not, he must take heed not to confuse ordinary wrestling. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, not to confuse ordinary wrestling in spirit with the powers of darkness, not to confuse it with manifestations of their workings through possession. The tactics of the enemy during the fighting through period. When the spirits of evil see their hold coming to an end, they never let go until the cause is fully removed. And they continue to attack if the thing they have attacked about still exists in any degree. When fighting through, the enemy has various tactics to hinder the man's deliverance and will dangle a thing before the mind, which is not the true cause of the possession, so as to get the believer occupied with it whilst he is gaining, that is, whilst he is gaining all the time, pouring in accusations. So when it says he is gaining, it's talking about the evil spirit, whilst he is gaining all the time because of believing the deception. Whilst he is gaining all the time, pouring in accusation upon his victim until he is bewildered and confused, the victim. Charges, accusations, blame, guilt, direct from the enemy or indirectly through others. Accusing spirits can say, you are wrong when you are not wrong and vice versa. And also say, you are wrong when you are wrong and right when you are right, but it is very essential that the believer does not accept blame until he is absolutely sure that it is deserved. And then not from Satan's lying spirits 
who have not been appointed by God to do the convicting work of the Holy Spirit. When once the truth has dawned upon the victim of the powers of darkness, and they no longer hope to gain by deception, their one great attack all through from the moment of undeceiving to final dispossession is the perpetual charge, you are wrong. So as to keep the man in ceaseless condemnation. The poor persecuted believer then goes to God and tries to get victory over sin, but in vain. The more he prays, the more he appears to sink into a hopeless bog. He seems to himself to be one mass of sin without hope of freedom, but it is victory over the powers of the darkness he needs and will quickly, quickly prove this when he recognizes the true cause of his trouble and lays hold of the Calvary victory over Satan. The weapon of scripture. In fighting back to freedom, the believer must wield scripture as the divinely provided weapon for victory over evil spirits. The verse is used with immediate effect and giving evidence of relief indicate the specific nature of any attack, showing by the efficacy of the weapon used the immediate cause of the conflict. The believer reasoning back from effectiveness of the weapon to the cause of the warfare. For instance, if the text wielded is that Satan is the father of lies and the believer declares that he refuses all lies, brings liberty from the oppression of the enemy, it indicates that the enemy is attacking with some, some of his deceptive workings. Then the believer should not only refuse all his lies, but pray, Lord, destroy all the devil's lies to me. And you see how simple that is. Somebody's trying to come in. I got it. There you go. You see how simple that is. Lord, destroy all the devil's lies to me. It's that simple. All this simply means that in the path to freedom, the deceived believer must act intelligently. He must know the truth, and by the truth being received and acted upon, he is set free. In going down into the deception, the intelligence is unused. But in recovering freedom, he must act with deliberate knowledge. In other words, he goes down passively, but he must emerge to liberty actively. That is, by the action of his whole being. Force must be used against force. There are two aspects of the use of force in the fight against the powers of darkness. One of using spirit force against spirit force when the believer is free from possession. And the second of physical force brought into action against their power or grip of the body. Either of these, the deceiver may suggest as a self-effort and deceive the man into taking up a passive attitude and thus to cease his resistance against him. When the believer is fighting free from possession, he must bring into action all the forces of his tripartite being and must know the place of the spirit, the soul, and the body in the conflict. Example, if evil spirits have a hold on the muscle, muscles of the bodily frame, there must be effort and use of the muscles to dislodge them. And so in every other part of the being, the believer therefore must not be afraid to use force, pure force, which simply means the active use of spirit, soul, and body in their various actions. Evil spirits by possession cause the forces of the tripartite man to be inactive and passive. And now these must be aroused to action against the force holding them. There must be liberation of the physical being from passivity as well as the mind and spirit. The danger of a wrong kind of fight. But resistance, in other words, action of spirit, soul, or body must not take place of refusal by the will. A man may fight without any result if he does not first refuse. There is an evil fight. In, a, in other words, 
a resistance in body or brain, which is due to possession. If it exits, it must be refused. To be clear that this, the evil force is not an operation, the believer can say, I refuse all evil fight now in spirit, soul, and bo or body. The believer may be resisting something in himself, which is the fruit of his choice in the past, and which only his refusal or revoking of his past choice can touch in the present. Fighting by force or resistance must therefore always have the back at the back of it, the volitional attitude of refusal. The volitional attitude of refusal. For example, one, in the refusing stage of regaining the use of the memory, the man says, I will, so he's saying, I choose, I will to remember. And so to speak, by the action of his will, he lays hold of freedom. Then follows, too, the actual fighting stage where he holds the liberty he has taken by refusal and actively insists upon the enemy giving way until the memory becomes really free from his, from its, his possession. A few brief suggestions for attitude and action may be added here in condensed form for the guidance of any who are seeking freedom from the enemy's power. One, keep claiming the power of the blood. Revelations 12, 11. You want to, you want to, you want to say it? <laughs> Pastor Charlie? I had to unmute. No, I had to unmute. I'm sorry. Revelation. We unwell, I was saying, and we overcome them by the look blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony and they love not their lives unto death. Amen. Pray for light and face the past. Pray for light and face the past. Resist the enemy persistently in your spirit. It gives the page numbers, 183, 185, 257. So resist the, the devil persistently in your spirit. Never give up hope that you will be set free. Avoid all self-introspection. It talks about that on 190. So avoid all self-introspection. Do not turn in. Lie, lie, lie. Live and pray for others. And yes. thus, yes, absolutely. Live and pray for others and thus keep your spirit in full aggressive and resisting power. Right. There you are. Again, it, it may be said, Stand daily on Romans 6, 11, as the you know, attitude to sin. That likewise reckon yourselves to be dead into sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Res uh, resist the enemy daily that's, on the ground. That's, that's our favorite one. Yeah, let me just do the, the whole sentence. Go ahead. Resist the enemy daily on the ground of the blood of Christ. So James uh, 4, 7. Resist the devil and he'll flee. Revelation 12, 11, again, we know we overcome him by the yep. blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony and love not their lives until death. Thank you, Lord. Live daily for others. Yes. Outward and not, and in. not inward. Yes. Live daily for others. Eh? Serve. Pray for others. Right. Everything and, we've been preaching for the last few days in the Romans walk. Amen. Live daily for others outward in other words outward and not inward the footing on romans 6 11 a weapon of victory the standing on romans 6 11 means the attitude of the believer reckoning himself dead unto sin in jesus christ it is a declaration of death a gulf of death to evil spirits as well as sin to evil spirits working in through for instead of mm. <laughs> also you can also add in uh, against but instead of there it is right there or in conjunction with the man let me say that again evil spirits working in through for instead of or in conjunction with the man to risk re to resist the enemy on the ground of the blood of christ means wielding the weapon of the finished work of Christ by faith. Amen. Words, 
Amen. In other words, his death for sin, freeing the trusting believer from the guilt of sin, Amen. his death of sin on the cross and the believer's death with them, freeing the man from the power of sin and his death victory on Calvary, freeing the believer from the power of Satan. Amen. Amen. That's good stuff. It is. A condensed form of the principles and conditions for deliverance from deception and possession of evil spirits in any degree may be given as follows. Knowledge of the possibility of deception and possession. Admission of actual deception and possession. Mm -hmm. Attitude of neutrality toward all past experiences, spiritual, until the, the truth concerning them is ascertained. So attitude of neutrality until you know exactly what happened. This is talking about past experiences now. Refusal of all ground yes. to evil spirits. Refusal of all ground to evil spirits. In some cases, in some cases, the casting out of evil spirits by the authority of the name of Christ. Notice it says in some cases, casting out, you can't cast out deception. So in some cases, the casting out of evil spirits by the authority of the name of Jesus Christ. The believer taking position of death to sin, Romans 6, 11. Uh, likewise, reckon ye yourselves to be dead into sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. The detection and refusal of all that belongs to possession. The detection and refusal of all that belongs to possession. The understanding of the criterion of the true normal condition so as to gauge signs of dispossession. Uh, Roberta, oh, there she is. Someone got okay. Act, here, here it is, active. Active usage of the faculties so that they reach the normal condition. Got to use your brain. Not just your brain, your, your body, your brain, and your spirit. All of it. The That's tri right, tri Bart, I, yeah. 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 Just yeah. read that the other page. Yeah. You know, I mean, even when you start, you know, becoming slothful and just hanging around and, and just, you know, and they'll say, oh, not now. I'll do that later. Just, just that kind of passivity. It's hard to get out of. It's hard to get out of. So, but it's activity, activity that, that puts out passivity, right? Remember, in another brief form of summary of the steps to deliver, and in another brief form, a summary of the steps to deliverance may be given as follows. Recognize persistently the true cause of bondage. In other words, the work of evil spirit or spirits. Choose, get this, choose to have absolutely nothing to do with the powers of darkness. Frequently declare this. Go away, Ken. Not here, not now. Come on, come on. Go. Oh, yeah, here. No, um, choose to, do not talk or trouble about their manifestations. Recognize, refuse, and then ignore them. Four, refuse and reject all their lies and excuses as they are recognized. Now notice this one. Five, notice the thoughts and the way they come, in which they come, and when, and immediately declare the attitude of Romans 6, 11 against the interferences of the enemy. I'll just add this really quickly. When something just flashes into your mind real quick, a suggestion or some vision or whatever, when it flashes in out of nowhere, you know it's not from God and it's not your own, okay? And then you just got to say, hey, no, <laughs> sorry, you came in too quick. Not yet. I bind you. I bind you to the mind of Christ. I bind you to the obedience of Christ. Now get out. That's it. Hindrances to deliverance from deception and, pos and possession may again be given here briefly as hindrances, remember not knowing it is possible to be deceived. Thinking God will not allow a believer to be deceived. Saying, I am safe under the blood. How many times have you heard, I'll cover, cover with the blood. You got to know what the blood does. There are many things the bloods will do 
there are things the blood won't do you. We won't protect you from deception, okay? It won't. I am safe under the blood without the intelligent knowledge of conditions uh, for saying I have no sin to open the door to an evil spirit. Can you imagine? Five, saying I am doing all that God wants, so all must be all right without seeking to understand what the will of the Lord is. Ephesians 5, 10 to 17. Through 17, proving that it's acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever does make a manifest is light. And that's why it's so important. Wherefore he saith again. Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See, then you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what is the will of the Lord, what it is. Amen. Amen. Okay, some hints on overcoming passivity of mind are as follows. Act as far as you can, doing what you can. Take the initiative instead of passively defending on others. Decide for yourself in everything you can. Do not lean on others. Live in the moment, watch and pray step by step. Use your mind and think. Think over all you do and say and are. The slow weakening of possession as the believer maintains resistance. Column Hitting column three. And remember, the column is the one that's back on, what is it, 180, 185. Okay? We're talking about the column, the, the, the graph. The whole thing on 185. So now we're in column three. Just possession. It's gradual removal. Removal as ground is discovered and removed. So the slow weakening of possession as the believer maintains resistance. The possession by the enemy that now slowly weakens as the ground which he held is steadfastly refused mm. and given up. The deceiver fought long to obtain the ground, and the believer may have to fight a long time before he is fully set free. The weakening of the possession, too, is according to the degree in which the ground is, give, is removed. And if the man does not, meanwhile, give more ground to the foe, this makes the deliverance gradual. Amen. It is true, but... In most cases, the snare may have been gradually woven about him for many years. Film after film may have slowly come upon the mind, preparing for the deception of after years. So, deliverance comes gradual. <laughs> there it is. Yep. I put that in parentheses and underlined. Yeah, I go here. Yeah. Preparing for the deception of after years. Mm, that's right. Later it's not on. Name it and claim it, one and done. No. Column four. Following the steady attitude of refusal of ground, light begins to break in with the discovery of the excuses. <laughs> <laughs> the enemy is making to hide the true location. For the persistent endeavor is to make the man believe, get this, the persistent endeavor is to make the man believe that the manifestations are due to some other cause. The chief excuses over the manifestation of possession center around the suggestions. It is divine, natural, physical, or else temperament, circumstances, others wrongdoing, etc. in order to cover or hide the ground which is held. But as the excuses are recognized, the believer resists them and calls the excuses by the right name 
of Satan's lies. Mm. So remember something, the persistent endeavor, why? To make the man believe that the manifestations are due to some other cause, because the minute you do, you give them more ground. After getting rid of the counterfeits of the divine workings, the difficult stage is the recognizing and getting free from the counterfeits of the man himself, the counterfeits of the man himself. As the excuses or lies are recognized, the believer becomes more acute in detection and less ready to accept the natural and physical causes as true explanations without examination and certainty. If example, if he cannot bear to hear or speak about a person, he asks why. If an attack on a certain point does not cease, he asks why. The truth is a believer cannot bear things because of the attacks through possession, and he cannot do thing, uh, things because of possession. Why? <laughs> Naming, remember that, ask why. Why, Lord, why is this happening? Naming the attack a factor in victory. Naming the attack is a great factor for victory. For example, an attack may be made to hinder. Then the believer must be on guard against all hindrances, seen and unseen, which the hinderer is placing in his way. It may be to make him impatient. It may be to make him impatient. Mm. <laughs> then he must be on guard over all things liable to test his patience. The sooner the attack is recognized and named, the quicker the weapon can be called into use to destroy it. It may be a flood of accusations of doing wrong, of wrongdoing, sorry, which need to be recognized or tested as to their truth. When the accuser charges the believer with some specific wrong over a certain thing, and he surrenders that thing to God, if the accusation does not pass away, it shows that it is not true ground for the accusation, but some other cause hidden from view. The believer should then seek light from God upon the hidden causes, according to John 3, 21. Yeah, that teaches us, but he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Amen. This goes back to the word of God. The believer should then seek light from God upon the hidden causes, according to John 3.21, and refuse the cause of the accusation without knowing what it is, saying, I refuse the cause of this attack, whatever it is, and I trust the Lord to destroy it. But often, when the believer is charged with being wrong over a certain thing, and, is fought, and it is fought off again and again, and in this way, it does not pass away. Then the true cause of the attack is possession and not a thing at all. The matter to be fought is possession as a whole. Now, listen, the true location of the deceiving spirit will often be found in the opposite direction to the apparent one. For they know that they are being exposed and dislodged. So they vigorously apply an attack upon some other place to divert attention. I'll say that whole thing again. The true location of the deceiving spirit will often be found in the opposite direction to the apparent one. For they know that they are being exposed and dislodged, so they vigorously ply an attack upon some other place to divert attention. The symptoms slowly passing away. Oh, we're going to get through this chapter tonight. The yeah. symptoms slowly passing away. We're in column five. The effect of these preceding steps can now be seen. The symptoms slowly pass away, and the believer coming back to normal conditions finds his faculties, faculties usable and his thoughts once more under the control of his own volition. It is a spiritual resurrection 
from a satanic burial. Now the one who is being freed must be on guard not to think it is final victory or that the deceiving spirits have been fully dislodged because the manifestations have ceased. Nor must he think that when the intruder has been cast out, in some cases where casting out is possible and successful, that he is completely delivered. If there are no actual manifestations, it is necessary to watch and pray as never before. The evil spirit has been exposed. The soul has been undeceived. But the deeper the deception, the longer is the time for the film of Satan upon the mind to be removed. And the passivity of the various faculties of spirit, soul, or body to be destroyed. Notice what it says there. Passivity to be destroyed, not cast out, destroyed. destroyed. To be undeceived does not always mean to be delivered. The believer must therefore beware of the snare of ceasing the fight against possession when ease comes. It is here that the believer needs to know himself so as to be able to judge of the extent of his liberation. And this he does by having a clear criterion of his true normal condition, so as to detect whether he is above it and therefore strained beyond his normal poise and measure or below it and therefore less capable in all the departments of his being. So notice there is too far up or too far down. Above it, strained beyond his normal poise and measure or below it, less capable in all the departments of his being. The importance of knowing the true normal. Here it is. For these reasons, it is essential and indispensable for full deliverance from the power of evil spirits that a believer know the standard of his normal condition. And with this gauge before him can judge of his degree of deliverance physically, intellectually, and spiritually, so as to fight through with steady volition and faith until every faculty is free. And he stands a liberated man in the liberty wherewith Christ has made him free. As he judges himself by this criterion, he may say, things are not the same as they were. And then he fights through by prayer to his normal condition. The deceiving spirits, listen, the deceiving spirits will suggest all kinds of excuses to stop the man's advance to freedom. Example, if he is 40 years of age, they will say, 40, oh, to be 40. If he was 40 years of age, they will suggest that the mind cannot be as vigorous as at 20. Or overwork is the cause of his being below what he should be. But he must not accept reasons which appear to be natural, if he has been subject of possession. Let the believer know the highest measure of grace, whereunto he has attained for spirit, soul, and body, and resist all attempts of the powers of darkness to keep him below it at any time. If he is vigilant, he will know that the lying spirits will endeavor to deceive him about it, and he must resist their lies. Wow. Regaining the normal. Some practical ways of keeping the mind in its normal working condition may be briefly suggested as follows. A, attitude to the past. There should be no regrets or brooding over things done or undone. This is an ordinary operation of the mind in thinking over the past, entangled into an evil kind of thinking, which is generally described as brooding. The believer must learn to discern for himself when he is simply thinking or being drawn into a state of regretting or brooding. For the victory in the life, there must be victory in regard to the past with all its failures. The good of the past causes no trouble to the mind, but only the real or supposed evil. This should be dealt with by dealing with God on the ground of 1 John 1.7. And thus the believer be delivered from it. Amen. But if we walk in the light and he is in the light, we have fellowship 
one with another in the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Amen. So there's a, there's a good way to walk. Amen. In regarding the normal working of the mind, it needs first to be brought into action and then into balanced action. This is very difficult and at times impossible whilst there is an evil spirit possession. Possession must therefore pass away before balanced working is restored. The principle applies to every faculty. The attitude to the future, B, the same may be said in the action in the mind in regard to the future. It is lawful to think of the past and think of the future so long as an evil state of brooding brought about by sin or Satan is not yielded to. And I'll say this, anytime you do get worried about what's going to happen, you just got to turn to God and say, Lord, I trust you. I know you will bless me. I know you will bless me. Thank you, Lord. That's it. C, the attitude to evil spirits. We must not be permitted to interfere by the believer seeing to it as no new ground is given, either for possession or for interference. D, the attitude to the present moment. This should be steady concentration of the mind upon the duties of the moment, keeping it in active readiness for use as the occasion as occasion requires. This does not mean ceaseless activity for activity of the mind so that it is never at rest can be a symptom of possession. Let me say that again. This does not mean ceaseless activity for activity of the mind so that it is never at rest can be a symptom of possession. Now we're getting into the regaining of the will. The weapon of the word of God. The believer must understand that the regaining of the fa facile use of the faculties and the maintenance of the mind in healthy condition after passive surrender to evil spirits will mean a steady fight with the powers of darkness, which will require the use of weapons of warfare given in the word of God as tried and proved by experience. Weapons, for instance, such as the truth in the text Sufficient for the day is the evil thereof. For, resist, for resisting brooding over the past or torturing pictures of the future. Torturing pictures. Torturing pictures of the future. Resist the devil and he will flee from you when the pressure of the enemy is severe. And other fighting texts, which will prove truly to be the sword of the spirit. To trust to thrust, sorry, trust, to thrust at the enemy in the evil day of his onslaught upon the escaping believer. Now, I got this all outlined here. The steady attitude of action of the will. The steady attitude or action of the will in keeping the mind in normal working condition free from the interference of the enemy. The believer should maintain the attitude of the will steadily set. In other words, I will, I choose, I will that my mind shall not be passive. I will, I choose to have full control of and to use my faculties. I will to recognize everything that comes from demon possession, yes. all of which declares the choice of the man rather than his just than his determination to do these things. It's very important, the choice. You gotta declare your choice. Just a determination to do it is not enough. Listen, the powers of darkness are not affected by mere determination. In other words, resolve. But they are rendered powerless by the act of volition, definitely choosing in the strength of God, given of God to stand against them. Amen. So important to, to make that choice, say, I choose, I'm, I'm not just resolve, not just determination, the actual choice and the utterance of saying it. The results in experience when delivered. We're in column six now. 
the believer now finds the following results and experience. He has clear vision in the light of God of the enemy's workings without fear. A clear mind, intelligently in exercise again in all its actions. A calm decision of the will with a strong, pure spirit in resisting without hesitation all he sees to be of the adversary. Now, I'll say it again. In a, a strong, pure spirit in resisting, important, without hesitation. Without has all he sees to be of the adversary. Don't save it for later. You attack right there. Instead of acceptance of the enemy's workings, there is an established attitude, attitude. of refusal. Mm -hmm. Instead of a lie in the mind, there is truth. Instead of ignorance, there is knowledge. The delivered believer now has a deep longing for the deliverance of others. He sees to be in the net of the fowler. Acute insight into the devil's true character in his bitter enmity to Christ and Christ's redeemed. Amen. Past perplexities in spiritual experiences are now clearly understood and the adversary detected where it was little thought to be had, he had a place. The undeceived one now seeing with astonishment the naturalness of his supernatural workings. That's a mouthful right there. That's a mouthful. Let me say that again. Let me say it again. The undeceived one now seeing with astonishment the naturalness of his supernatural workings. That's the devil's workings. Mm. The man is never off guard now, but always alert, watching against the powers of darkness whilst relying upon the strength of God. Through God, we shall do valiantly because it is he that will tread down our enemies. Amen. Praise the Lord. Whilst relying on the strength of God, and there is a manifest development of resisting power against the wicked spirits attacking him in the heavenly places, instead of the weak and passive attitude of the past, which enabled them to hinder or mislead him. The steps to deliverance which have been given deal with the practical aspect of the believer's actions. On the divine side, the victory has been won and Satan and his deceiving spirits have been conquered. But the actual liberation of the believer demands his active cooperation with the Holy Spirit and the steady exercise of his volition, choosing freedom instead of bondage and the normal use of every faculty of his being set at liberty from the bondage of the enemy. He that doeth the truth come to the light. John 3, 21. But he that doeth truth come to the light. We're repeating it. That his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. A second time we've used that verse. Yes. Evil spirits hate scrutiny and so work undercover with deception and lies. The believer must come to the light of God for his light upon spiritual experiences. All spiritual experiences. Yeah, all spiritual experiences. Sorry, thank you. As well as other departments of the life. Mm. If he is to cast off the works of darkness. Romans 13, verse 12. Yep, the night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. And let us put on the armor of light. And we can't do that without the word of God and sisters and put on the armor of god the armor of light amen now the scripture aspect of deliverance final page in this chapter the blood of jesus christ god's son cleanseth us from all sin if we walk in the light if but we the light must shine in for the soul to walk in it the evil spirits can be cast out in the name of jesus but the ground they have gained can only be removed by the intelligent choice of the will, refusing the ground, Use the ground. Yeah. and appropriating deliverance by death with Christ on Calvary. Chapter eight. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. Thank 